Modern Neo is a photo editing software that tries to combine Lightroom and Photoshop and AI tools all in one. It's been a long time since I've talked about it here on the channel because the updates were coming slowly and some features were still kind of buggy. But now version 1.19 came out with new features, improved usability, a new logo redesign, yeah, showing that things developed quite a bit. So let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, man, man, in this channel I help you with the tech tools to be creative. So let's waste no time and jump right into it. If you used it before, it's still similar but with some new features around here. If you haven't, you notice that the panels look a bit like Lightroom, with a more modern approach. You can organize your files in catalogs and albums and rate the photos to keep it all tidy. Now, here on the right, you notice already something special. Before even getting into the edit module, you can already access the generative tools and some of the extensions, basically special features. The generative tools will need an active connection to process and recreate parts of the images, like Generase, which deletes whatever you brush on and makes it look like it was never there. Now, it deserves a quick mention that the software comes with sample images and that have these stickers on top, and this makes it so easy to learn and discover the features available. Generase actually surprised me positively, definitely to be used. GenSwap, which mimics the generative feel from Adobe, is a bit meh. Just like generative feel actually sometimes, in which weird artifacts come up and it just doesn't respect some of the prompts. In my tests it seemed like simple was better, and then some results were quite okay. GenExpand allows you to expand the photo, so to show you what I mean, let's mix it with testing one of the features below, the panorama stitching. If you shoot a panorama by moving the camera around while leaving some intersection in the photos, you can bring them all here, and Luminar will give you this three-dimensional tool that is super interesting, to make the distortion on point. After accepting, you're gonna get a cropped version of the original, because there were some blank spaces. Regarding Panorama, I was super satisfied, it's something you can perfectly well use in your shots. Then comes Generative Expand. I don't like how tight the tip of the mountain is here to the edge, so let's do something about it. I'll bring it over, expand on the top and hit Generate, and it will try to understand what's in that area and simply extend it. Also worked really well in simple borders and one border at a time. Below, you get some powerful extensions like HDR Merge, so you can combine different exposures like in real estate. Basically, during my test, too many shots with different exposures caused artifacts, like you can see here in the drawers or here in this building. Two shots, two stops apart, got the best results, like in this one here. Focus stacking is if you want to take several shots with different focus points and combine into one. Here I got each element in focus on a different shot and bringing them together in this one. We got a bit of a glow mainly on this area and here, so it's not perfect, but quite okay if you don't want to be manually masking it. Upscale is to increase the resolution and sharpness of some shots. Too extreme, like here from a 480 pixels to a 3000, it's a bit of a mess. So it's not meant for that. But let's say I've got a photo in full HD and I want to be able to export this video in 4K and show you on screen so I can use it to make it sharper and extend it. That's when it works. And definitely you can see it crispier this way. Okay, all this and we didn't even go to the edit module yet. Here, you're gonna see all the tools are split in categories and you can set your favorites up high, the extensions are up here and below you got the essentials, landscape tools, creative, portrait and professional tools. They have some AI tools mixed into each one of them. The Essentials got the basic tools like Exposure, Contrast, Color Tools, etc. I won't go into detail, but you can see it's got all basics like Curves, HSL, Panel and much more. Now the Landscape category brings two features that are much younger, the Twilight Enhancer and the Water Enhancer. Let me show you with these two shots here. First, the Twilight Enhancer is really no joke. I love how one click, it transforms the whole scene, adjusting the colors all around. And the controls are so simple with the temperature of the sky, where around dawn we are, the shading of the elements around. Check out how it made my Jordan shot look like the Martian, it's pretty cool. Now the Water Enhancer mixes a quick masking tool with controls meant specifically for water, with blue and green sliders. And if you went too far, you can always dial back with the original color slider. It's not always that the mask comes out perfect, but you can always refine it. 
Now the fancy tools are definitely not over here. You can use the sun rays to place the sun and watch how it interacts with the landscape, like the mountain in this shot. Atmosphere adds fog to a scene to make it even more magical. And Mystico adds this Orton effect with a bit of a blur to some areas. And while I'm editing, you might have noticed that there is this white dot up here. And this is the edits tab, where you can see everything you've done so far. And you can still tweak anything you'd like. It's a bit of a different approach, like the develop module down here, where you see all edits in the raw image, while on the edit page itself, it's now reset. So you gotta pay attention a bit and get used to this workflow, but it's no big deal. There's still an infinite amount of tools you can use, like the Luminar Share app that allows you to see the edit in real time in your phone to compare the colors. The plugins for Lightroom and Photoshop that allow you to edit on those if you prefer and come to Luminar just for a round trip for the fancy edits and go back there. Or this background removal tool that is really cool. So I did a dedicated video that you can watch by clicking up here. For the rest, it would take like three hours just to have a glimpse. So let me know if you'd like to see more about any of these tools or more about Luminar in general, so I can craft some tutorials for you guys. Last but not least, how much it costs. If you use the link in the description, you'll get to this page and you see three options of subscriptions. And down here, the one-time purchase option. If you don't like the subscription style, your choice is made. Just bear in mind, you're gonna get the generative tools for one year and one machine only license. The pro subscription in the middle ends up being the best value, as you get all tools and all updates for a couple of years, plus two licenses. And there's a hack. If you hang around this page, wait just a little bit, this pop-up will come up and you're gonna get some extras for free. Anyways, there's a 30 days money back guarantee, so if it doesn't work for you, no worries. All right, if you wanna know more about Luminar Neo, check the link in the description and let me know in the comment section below if you have any doubts about it. If you've tried and liked it or not, and if you still wanna see a bit more about it, check out this video over here, in which I show a complete edit from scratch, so you can see how I go about stacking all these tools together. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you there. Good edits. Ciao.